I'm going to spend today doing something I don't often give myself the time to do, which is basically a whole day potting around the garden, around my house. I've currently got three beds and I'm looking to expand it in the future, but for now this is where I'm starting. And they just need a bit of attention, a bit of weeding, a bit of pruning. I've also got a wisteria that needs pruning, its first prune out of two. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to just taking my time and having a nice day in the sun, pottering about in my garden. I thought I'd just quickly show you in a bit more detail the first bed that I'm working on, which is also in many respects the youngest. So a lot of these plants are new, but ma many of them I moved from a different location or have taken from cuttings and propagated or sown from seed. So this is now coming up for sort of mid to late summer. So a lot of the plants like this valerian here, that's going over now, so I'll cut that back. Some of these other plants have gone a bit mad and I need to take those out. So basically I'll just give this bed a tidy up. Um, I'll take you around and show you the other side. There we are. So I've got a great big buddleia there. Some yarrow there, the Philadelphia Bella 12, my favourite plant, a Californian lilac. So some of these things just need a little bit of attention just to make it look nicer as we go into, into late summer, early, early autumn. finished for the day. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see the difference but I did a lot of weeding, cut back plants that had gone over to give space for the other plants. And it's looking much tidier. I gave the rosemary a trim and the buddleia actually had gone a bit crazy and it was kind of overshadowing other things. Oh, I didn't get to do the wisteria today because this, that and the other kind of took over so I'll do that tomorrow and also I think I need to ponder things for this late summer early autumn period to fill some of these gaps. This bed looks amazing in spring and early summer but come this sort of late summer early autumn period um, this plant comes into its own it's going to look amazing pretty soon covered in yellow flowers but everything else is sort of going over, so it would be nice to have a few things to fill some of these gaps. But it's still a relatively young bed, so there's time. It'll all start filling out. But if I, if I step back, yeah, I'm very pleased with that. I'm finally getting round to doing what, one of the jobs that I had planned to do yesterday, which is to prune this wisteria. Which goes all along the fence and carries on for quite a long way in that direction. And this is the base of the wisteria basically. So it's gone for many many meters. And what I'm pruning these whippy shoots which are going all up, all up the tree and uh, finding their way all over the place. Um, you don't have to prune wisteria, but pruning it will aid the amount of flowers that you get when it comes to flower in spring. So I prune it now, which in the southern hemisphere is summer. So I prune it in February and I prune it again in August, which in the southern hemisphere is late winter. And that helps to keep it in check and lets more light get to it and 
allows it to become way more floriferous. I think when we moved, um, the wisteria hadn't really been that well tended, so the first year the floral display was rubbish. Um, but in subsequent years it's been amazing. So I can testify to the fact that it's worth doing. And also, it's one of the more enjoyable tasks around the property. It's really nice just to sort of get in amongst the bush, hunt the shoots down uh, and trim them up. Get another sense of the general whippiness of the plant now, this time of year. What I'll be doing is taking these whips and chasing them back. So um, this is where it joins the plant. So I'll leave that and I'm counting out one, two, three, four, five leaf nodes and anything past that I'll be chopping off. And then in the winter when all of the leaves have fallen off, I'll then take it back to two or three. I'm sorry that's not focused too well, but I hope you get the gist. There we go. Probably doesn't look overly different, but it's had its five leaf bud prune in late summer. Looking much more compact. And uh, that's what I've got. Second barrow. Um, some of that's um, fennel. Got uh, two of those off the wisteria ready for its next pruning in late winter. I've decided to mow the lawns today, but um, <laughs> unlike previously, it'll be a bit of a pleasure because I'll be on my ride on, I hope. I haven't tried starting it, I'm sure it'll be fine. Previously to the mower working, I basically was working on a fortnightly cycle <laughs> um, because there was just so much to mow by hand. Um, I just, I couldn't do it weekly and it was getting more and more out of control. <laughs> but hopefully, by the end of today, I will have done everything. Looking good. On my way back to the house, I noticed Vita. This is her new game. Can you see her? There's a beady eye. Hiding in the bush, cat. Oh, there she is. <laughs> Hiding in the bush, no doubt hoping to pounce out on an unsuspecting bird. Vita, that is simply not cricket. I don't know if you'll be able to see all of those, but you can probably hear them. I might zoom in. We have these little bees or wasps we make these sort of papery nests on the eaves of our house. I don't mind them, they don't bother me, they keep themselves to themselves. Mind you, the colony is getting a bit bigger. It's quite cool though. I don't know if you can tell just by looking. But it's another one of those sticky hot days. It's over 30 at the moment. And we're getting on for the hottest part of the day. I've done all my mowing, but I don't like to be idle. And um, if you've been following me, I'm um, Disappointed to report that power is currently out to the house as well. So uh, I've decided to come and do some potting in my potting shed. 
had a couple of different types of lettuce that have gone over. Um, a red velvet and a crisp mint. The crisp mint lettuce was amazing. It's really, really nice. I'll definitely grow it again. But um, I like to keep things ticking over and it's, it's late summer now, so we're coming into autumn. I can't grow quite a lot of things over summer because they just get attacked by caterpillars and, and butterflies and whatever. Um, this is my tin of seeds, quite well used. I like to grow things that it's tricky to get in the shops. This is quite a nice one. Um, this is an interesting Asian vegetable as well. Um, oh, that's a Christmas. As well as sort of basics. You'll possibly notice that quite a lot of my seeds come from this place, the Diggers Club. I don't think they um, ship outside of Australia. Uh, but essentially, uh, as well as sort of quite standard stuff, they also have a really good selection of more unusual seeds and I grow all of my food crops from seed. So I recently placed an order and this is what I've received. This um, kale, red kale is lovely. Um, because we're in quite a cold place here and it can get frosty, kale's a good winter crop. Um, I'm going to try some tiny little carrots that apparently will do quite well in boxes. Um, I grow everything in window boxes at the moment. I also thought I'd try these little beetroots. Ah, here's another kale. I, I really like this one. Um, this dwarf kale is really nice. This sounded like a really interesting lettuce. Um, you can eat it le like lettuce or you can cook it. Um, but I don't know, it says all seasons. I don't know if I'll plant that out now or if I'll wait till the summer. It says slow to bolt in warm weather and covers off and frost and make that's a possibility. Then I've got this perpetual spinach. I thought that sounded interesting. Oh well, yeah, it does say here throughout the warmer months. Well then again on the back it says all seasons. I might hang on to this for um, summer. I do have a problem with spinach bolting. So I thought this sounded like it could be quite a good option, but I think I'll hang on to that. So that leaves me potentially with five, and I've got two. Let's go up to where I grow stuff and see if, what I've got room for. This is where I currently grow my food crops. Um, it's one of those solutions that was temporary but has become semi-permanent, although we are working on an alternative, which I'll speak about more in a bit. Um, but basically, um, I had blithely, when we first moved here, grown stuff along the house here because it gets a good amount of sun and I had some chilli plants, these are um, chilli plants here I had some chilli plants and I was just so excited because for the first time ever I could grow chilli outside it was like really cool in Scotland it took quite a lot of effort to get them growing <laughs> but they grew here really well and I came down one morning and they had all been eaten <laughs> by the dreaded wallaby or kangaroo or who knows. So I realised that I would need to protect the plants until I've got a proper vegetable garden, which will have to be itself completely encased because the problem here is not only the marsupials, possibly the mammals, but also the birds. So anyway, I've got these temporary shells and I grew everything in tubs and window boxes. It's all very, it, it's all very temporary, it's not very satisfactory. I like growing food, but at the moment it's the best I can do. So, I've got the two, and I can probably get three there. I can probably get one there and one there, so I probably could get all five. If I put one here, maybe one down at the bottom and see if I can squeeze four on there. I probably could get all five of those going. Might be worth a try. Um, I've got some Mizuna coming on here, some normal basil, and this is a special type of basil, sort of small compact growing. This is that Tokyo Bacana, it's small at the moment. Giant mustard, that's a really nice plant. 
and I've got quite a lot of stuff that I've only just planted out. Oh, this is that perilla, and I've got this um, Vietnamese mint. Quite a lot of these have been cut back and now they're regenerating. And things are sort of looking a bit droopy because it's just so stinking hot. But they perk up again uh, as the temperature dissipates and the sun goes off of them. It's not ideal they're in plastic, so part of our plan is to replace this plastic with more like fly screens. I thought I'd quickly show you my setup. So I keep big sort of spare pots down here and under my workbench I keep smaller spare pots. I've got a, some sort of fertilisers, a range of fertilisers and specialist composts. And this is my box of other stuff. Um, my hand hoe, which is my favourite tool. I've got this chip and pattern bill hook, my pride and joy. And I've got my scoop. Then at the side of my workbench I've got this bin and I've cut the bottom off the bin so it's stood on the ground. And inside here I keep my potting compost mix. That's a mixture of compost, bought potting compost and manure. And what I can do is scoop it out, put it in my pot and then when I finish for the day I just take my brush from here and sweep it all back into the bin. So I don't waste any. Anyway, I'm going to crack on with my potting. I just thought I'd just quickly show you these. I also get these plant labels from the Diggers Club, although I'm pretty sure you can get them from anywhere. They're made of slate and they come with these little chalk pencils. So it means that they're completely reusable, although you can't write a lot of detail on them because <laughs> the surface is quite rough. Um, but they're quite attractive and jolly handy. They may not look like much at the moment, but lying on the floor of my potting shed is the beginnings of my new vegetable cupboard. It's made out of reclaimed timbers, but um, Will's wanting all these old nails removed. Uh, so essentially it'll be made of wood and it'll have walls and a door made out of fly screens, which will help it stay cooler, but also stop the insects getting in so readily. I can't shut those plastic ones up, it just gets way too hot in some respects, even in winter. Um, but those plastic ones won't go to waste. I've got a whole load of seeds. I'm going to try growing some ornamental plants by seed and I will start them off in there in the plastic ones on the other side of the house. So I'm going to crack on with this and uh, maybe one day when it's finished I'll be able to show you. Well, I think I'll leave it here for this week. I'm enjoying a well-earned break underneath my peach tree. Let me show you. Lovely old tree. Not that we ever get any peaches off of it. <laughs> I'm just sat here in the shade, admiring my garden. I think it's looking lovely in this light. I'm getting a haircut next week, long overdue. One of the reasons my hair has been looking so awful is that I've been growing out a fringe. So I might take that as an opportunity to update you on some of the things that I've discovered. I've been making progress on the hair department. I don't like to rush these things, but I do have some updates, so I might, to, might give you some info about that. I hope you have a good weekend. And I'll see you, I hope, next week.